Yes, of course, we astrophotographers love our hobby and we're proud of our creations, which appear after so many hours of work. And still, in some silent hours, don't we ask ourselves if what we're doing is really scientifically relevant, scientifically accurate, if this is something serious what we're doing, or if it's simple art, just some pleasant pictures, full of beauty and color, but simply there to amaze the masses and to please ourselves. Let's have an in-depth look on what applies more. Hey, this is View Into Space. I'm Sasha from Switzerland, so grüezi miteinander and thanks for watching my channel. Recently, when I was poking a little bit fun about visual astronomy, I received this comment. Grey wisps and blobs are transformed into pieces of beautiful sky art by stacking and processing. And yeah, I got the message. It's like, we visual astronomers, we do this serious scientific work, look carefully at these far, far objects. And you guys, you simply exploit it and make some cheap, colorful art out of it. And by the way, when we talk about space art or sky art, what I think about in my mind is something like this. And I really, really, really don't want to be brought into connection with something like this. But some people seem to like it. But back to the topic. While I could now simply ignore this comment and go on, I feel it's a good exercise to go through in our minds. Do we do science? Or do we do art? Or do we do both? Now, if you know me already, you know I do everything very systematically, and yes, we will in a second come to a table. <laughs> but before we do that, one question which I found interesting and looked up is, why do visual astronomers see things in black and white, while we astrophotographers see things in color? Are our colors simply made up and things are in reality in black and white? So the reason is that if the luminosity of an object is very low, our eyes switch into black and white mode, as they do usually when you look out at a very dark hour night. So it needs a certain luminosity that the color receptors of our eyes are actually triggered, and that is not given by practically all of the nebula that you can look at with your telescope. And that is the reason that visual astronomers see things in black and white. So with that, let's come to the table which I promised you. So I listed certain activities that we do and what it means if it's still depicting reality and where our judgment or where even our artistic notes come in. So the first thing we do is we capture a picture with our camera. And what our camera receives is the luminosity, and that is nothing more than the signal that we receive from the object in space. And we also receive this light in a certain wavelength which depicts the color. And also that represents 100% the reality. Nothing is altered here. Now, if we use a narrow band filter, we limit the wavelength that we receive, but the ones that we receive are still accurate. It doesn't change the wavelength to another one. It just blocks some wavelengths to enter the sensor. So until now, we're 100% scientifically accurate. So the next thing that we do is we stack the pictures. And we stack with the purpose of removing artifacts. And there is nothing wrong with removing artifacts, as these artifacts are actually something that's not even existing. These are artifacts created through our camera, through our system, and not through what comes in from space. The same applies for background extraction, and for denoising, at least to a certain extent. So until now, I would say we're still 100% with the truth, with the reality. So in the next group, 
we have some influence in how the picture will look like. And this reminds me a little bit when I show sometimes a photo from the beach, from the nature, to my wife, which just went through a normal editing process. And she looks at it and says, this is not how the colors looked like in reality. Now, am I an artist because of that? I don't think so. It's just that the way we as individual human beings see things and it appeals to us might be different. And so while I see the reality a little bit in a warmer tone, my wife would have seen it in a little bit of colder tone, for example. And in astrophotography, I think that starts with the stretching, with the histogram adjustment, with the curve adjustment. Somebody likes the background a little bit darker, somebody likes the color a little bit more to pop. It's a question of intensity. And also here, I do not think that we really alter the reality. It's just our interpretation of what we want to empathize on this picture. The same goes from my perspective with sharpening. Because again, the unsharpened part or why it is a little bit blurred might have had to do with our setup. So it's an error on the telescope side which we kind of correct with the sharpening. Now the next part gets a little bit tricky because until now I talked about one-shot color camera pictures. But if you go to narrow bands and we start assigning colors to HA, O3, S2, we have a lot of room for interpretation. We can go with the Hubble palette, we can go with a regular assignment, and if you want to be absolute accurate, then O3 is in principle somewhere between blue and green, while HA and S2 is actually in the red. And it couldn't even be distinguished. Now here we have to decide, do we want, in the name of science, to actually depict it with the right colors as it was received? Or do we want to depict the different frequencies in which we received the photons? And then we have no other choice than to give S2 another color in red, because otherwise we cannot differentiate it. So also here I believe that we are fully scientific because we change the colors not for the purpose of making it as beautiful as possible, but actually to show something about the picture. And now we come into borderline territory and that will be star reduction and deconvolution. Here we start to alter the form of the stars as we receive them to make it more beautiful or to emphasize the nebula. And you could say, this is not really 100% the reality anymore. We really inject something artificial into the picture. So I personally see this as a borderline case. The next things I feel they go purely in the artistic area. And the first one is obviously a full star removal, not for processing it and re-adding the stars, but just remove the stars and depict the picture without the stars. That's from my point, pure art, because it's not the reality anymore. The next thing I see as purely artistic is obviously adding false lens flares. And from my perspective, it's not only if you put it post with a software, but even people who put wires over the telescope to get the lens flares. This is just purely for show. This is purely for making it more beautiful. And I don't say you shouldn't do it. I just say we have to acknowledge this is art. This has nothing to do anymore with science. And with that, we get a little bit into the weird territories of people who add different planets just together to, that it looks beautiful, who, who add a different star background to a nebula and stunts like this. This gets for me even close to the area which, oh my God, let's not look at it anymore. Last but not least, any filters which we add at the end, like Insta filters. And I know I'm guilty of that too. But these filters, they really alter pictures to a level where it's not scientific anymore. So what's the bottom line? 
from my point of view, what we're doing is to a high degree scientific. There is obviously some interpretation on our side, but if that wouldn't be possible, then we could simply let robots shoot these pictures and process them. But our individual decisions do not take the scientific part again. It just reflects our own personal skill, taste, and also what we really want to show with the pictures. That said, there are some artistic traits or features or functions which we can add to the pictures to make them more beautiful, to create more amazement. And as long as we're true to ourselves and admit that we cross the line from science to art, that's fair game too. I think that's quite an interesting topic and I would be very curious to hear your opinion about that, how you see it. So please leave this in the comments below. And if you liked this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel below. Thanks a lot. See you next time and clear skies.